Good evening. I'm going to open up the workshop shop session of October 11, 2016. Councilmember Chapman? Here. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Councilmember Kendall? Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Please rise for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 6, 2016, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. City managers report on issues raised at prior council meetings. Special events, Leisha. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, did you just print out that email that had the list of, or is it in it? The email that has the list of electric problems. This is what you sent me. Oh, this is it. Okay. This is what you sent me. Okay. But it's probably the same as what's in here as well. Okay. Yes, this is it. Oh, okay. Good evening, Deputy Mayor and Council. On tonight's work session agenda, first application is the cru crucial patch day, which is VNA's breast cancer awareness event. Um, they want to hold this at their uh, location at 1301 Main Street but part of that will extend into Fireman's Park, which is why they're requesting permission from the city to use city property. Next is the Harvest Fest, sponsored by the Jersey Shore Dream Center, and this will be held at um, Springwood Park on October 29th from the hours of 10 to 3. The next two applications are requesting city dates. First one is from Epic Willpower. Um, they're seeking a city date to use to pair them out for a fundraiser. Next is the annual fishing club flea market, which will be held at Convention Hall. Again, they're seeking a city date. Um, the dates will be March 11th and 12th. Okay. And the last application I just handed you is from the Asbury Park Music Foundation. Um, they're seeking to do a boom carter jazz event in the Transportation Center on October 19th. Is this to be added to the resolution, Leisha, for yes. tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Any questions? Is that a jazz concert? Yes. Okay. Uh, one question. What's the procedure when we give out city dates for, like, the Paramount or Convention Hall? It goes through the Special Events Committee. Okay. Yeah. And it's we have a limited number of dates? Or it's up to 21 dates, is my understanding. Okay. We don't ever use all of them, do we? No. Yep. And also, you still have, the problem they have is you still have to pay for the lighting, the cleanup. Correct. You just don't have to pay, like, what you would have to pay to rent out the Paramount. Right. Perfect. It's a reduced rate. Right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, all right, we'll continue on to items to be presented by Cassandra Dickerson, Director of Community Development, 2017 Community Development Block Grant Annual Action Plan. Good evening, Deputy Mayor Council. It works. Um, the Department of Community Development will be submitting its annual action plan on November, on or before November 15, 2016. But before doing so, the CDBG committee recommends the following applicants to receive funding. And just so that everyone knows, we receive federal funds annually from HUD. Deputy Mayor? Yeah, it's, the pu it's for public facilities. So right. it's rehabbing public facilities. So right. the, the committee went through them in consultation with Michael and Cassandra um, and awarded Interfaith, the Esbury Park Historical Society, 
Community Affairs Resource and Boys and Girls Club. That was the final um, approvals. Does anyone have any, any questions about that? Are we good? On I can tell you what the, some of them are for. And there was sure. one that you left out, and I appreciate the reasoning, but people will be asking why. Oh, there was two, two applicants. Two were, two were left two out. Two applicants. Was left out. Yeah. They were denied. All good. Thank you. Okay, we'll continue on review of agenda items for October 12, 2016 regular meeting. Michael, do you want to go through the agenda? Um, Hannah do a press release on that? Yeah, she will. Um, resolution 406 is the Senior Citizen Swimming Program, um, a, an agreement with the community YMCA. This actually has been done um, over the years. This actually is now the first time we're doing it by resolution in the correct way. Um, speaking of doing things the correct way, resolution 407 is releasing the performance bond for 621 Lake Avenue. When a project is completed, um, the city council should release a performance bond and then it goes into what is called the maintenance guarantee period. Um, normally, it would be done by the city council. We're now bringing it towards the city council to do this the correct way. Uh, excuse me. Um, resolution 2016-413 is to overfund, is the refund over payment of taxes from ISTAR. Resolution 408 is bills list. 409 is rejecting the RFP for the EPA grant. This is the grant the city received $400,000 for. Uh, we put it out for consultants to do their professional services. We feel the costs are too high and we'll be asking you guys to reject it and going back out again. Um, resolution 2016, 2016-410 is adopting the Monmouth County Home Consortium Fiscal Year 2017 Annual Action Plan for Housing and Community Development. The city, along with three other municipalities, is in a consortium. Home is federal money that is passed through from HUD to the county to quote unquote the consortium who makes recommendations. Uh, cities, city nonprofits will receive approximately $95,000, which is an annual occurrence. It doesn't cost us anything, but we're in the consortium with Middletown, Long Branch, and I think the other one is Red Bank, I believe. Um, resolution. Since that time, it seems that no one ever notified the property owners and they've been paying taxes on it. So this resolution will authorize the city attorney to petition Superior Court to actually give the properties back to them on paper as they've been paying taxes on something they don't own. Um, How about the money? Well, we're keeping it because they paid tax on it, we should give it back to them. It's one of those we'll call no harm, no foul, unless they say keep the property and pay us back. But I don't do that. Um, for introduction, we have a simple vacating portion of Reeves Lane. Uh, that's Ordinance 2016-42. Ordinance 2016-43 is uh, amending the streets, sidewalks, and sidewalk signs work within the city right away within uh, Chapter 16.1. I'll get to that one in a second because that's a little bit detailed. And then 2016-44 
is approving and adopting an amendment to the Central Business District Redevelopment Plan relating to section titled Parking and Circulation, Cookman Avenue Retail Core and Implementations of the Redevelopment Plan. The city planner is sitting over in the corner and <coughs> you want to come up and give a brief update on what that is? Yeah. This amendment was before the council for referral to the planning board in August. The planning board had heard these three amendments. They had recommended changes to the parking, so some clarif uh, some modification of the of hours for um, residential parking, and for the section to amend the Cookman Avenue retail. Uh, retail court change to allow limited service the planning board is not recommending that the council approve that portion implementation of the redevelopment plan remains unchanged from what the council looked at in august that was basically cleanup language for that section of the ordinance because it was written as if we were going to go out rfp and search for developers and that was not the intent for the cpd plan a very quick synopsis. <laughs> so it's putting limited for anyone who doesn't didn't get that. It's putting limited service um, on first floor Cookman. For the Cookman Avenue portion, the parking portion was partially cleanup language. The other was to establish a a a different. Um, Price per parking space that's been an option for developers in the down in the CBD. Then, then rather than provide the required on-street parking, they could pay into a fund. And there's also some cleanup language in parking about who about accessory parking. That basically, if you are approved in the CBD for a project, that the parking is tied to the unit or the use that it has to remain so. It cannot be turned into commercial parking. So what is the fee that the developer would pay per parking space? That's up to the council to decide. Okay, all right. And we talked about adding some language about um, potentially doing some stormwater management. If I was gonna say there, if one of the other things that was, I should say, put in there is codified, even though it had occurred in the past without the language in the CBD plan, was putting a little bit more teeth into interim parking lo surface lots. Right. Surface parking lots that are not accessory are not permitted, <laughs> meaning that a pay for paved lot that's not tied to another um, use is not permitted. There are a few in the CBD that were done by redevelopers agreement, although the plan had made no provision for that. This small amendment puts the provision in for if the council so desired to, in the future, permit interim parking lots, they can for up to five years. And it's at the discretion of the council and the planning board to do so. It's not an automatic approval if someone applies thus for such. But also, um, it is my understanding that that there, there's a desire to have some environmental measure put in for, for, for drainage. So if there's the desire, we could add language about bioswales. Which we should, I guess, talk to Fred about at some point before. Sure, yes, I yeah. agree. I was supposed to talk to you about that, Fred, and then I got to the meeting already. Just, just okay. FYI. I also wanted to just um, make a point of the fact that not all of the amendments that the council referred over to the planning board were sent back to the council with a recommendation by the planning board. Um, but the council has the final say under the local redevelopment and housing law. So the council can approve or disapprove any recommendations made by the planning board so long as you take an affirmative vote of a majority of the full authorized membership of the council, which is three, and you set forth 
uh, the reasons for deviating from the planning board's recommendations as part of the minutes. And Michelle, as part of the ordinance, has incorporated uh, recommendations to the council, which would be part of your reasons and your rationale that would be part of the record for why you are not uh, complying with the planning board's recommendations. But ultimately, it's the council's determination. Okay. that I want to take a step back to the street sidewalk and sidewalk signs section chapter 16 uh, that one of the code uh, this code has this section of the code deals with um, street opening permits whether it's a public entity such as Casey PL um, the water company any sort of developer the city itself currently we don't have standards for how you actually open a road um, under our existing side not cover the whole so that's sort of the problem so these standards are actually going to as proposed change that it's going to say what you should backfill things with um, when and when you can't do road openings without an emergency um, it changes some language from like small to large uh, it gives the department of public works more power to work with utilities especially the water utility um, to try to get things done one of the constant complaints we hear about residents saying they don't come back well what happens with the water utility is they want to make sure that anything that they repair actually is fixed before they actually mill and pave so that's usually a three-month process at this time of the year it goes into the spring but they do that for a reason they want the ground to settle they want to make sure that their infrastructure improvements take before they actually do a final patch but this will actually set standards on how you place things um, the backfill that you have to use how you notify us set standards for the escrow of insurance which it increases it so that we can have it except in the case of the public utilities um, which are set by DPU but this actually will set a standard that will protect us and when I mean protect for example under the local bond law a normal road is 10 years um, you pay for it for a 10 year useful life the current city code says if you cut into a road after five years you don't have to replace it this actually goes to the bond law where now it's so it's going to give us more protections. We start paving streets again in the next hopefully couple months once we get done with the transportation trust fund to say, okay, developer, okay, private party, okay, utility, you've cut this much. You need to actually repave it. Um, in the ordinance, I want to make one change. Uh, Robert Bianchini has requested one change. Um, in the definitions of the extent of opening of 100 feet or more, we want to change that. address the bond issue how much it is and um, section C under the permit required uh, section C covers basically the utilities um, that's set by DPU standards so we don't have anything that we can do there um, it says which may be a bond of such public utilities solely in, in the sum of $100,000 we usually just take an escrow with them uh, and move forward with it we haven't had a full time CFO as you know so with this um, we're going to be meeting towards the end of the year internally staff to set up a better way to do it because people are supposed to put up an escrow and they don't especially with sidewalk curb cuts so it's a problem but this will remedy that that they're supposed to put up the escrow to make sure that the work is done correctly because we've had a couple people put in it wrong curb cuts so we want to be able to say you're doing it wrong we have your money we can fix it it's internally we'll have to do say curb cuts are you referring to the apron part of the driveway or yes or the end of the sidewalk both um, some people have expanded their driveway which no you can't um, without a permit or without going for zoning so this will actually 
now give us more speed to go after those people on the ground. Okay. Any further questions? All right, we'll move on to matters from City Council. Anybody from City Council have any matters? One thing, as, as most of you know, Haiti has been devastate, devastated by the recent um, Hurricane Matthew. And the Good News radio station here in Asbury Park is raising funds to send to Haiti. So if anyone wishes to donate, um, I would like to give you this information. It's going to go to the Good News Committee Network, Inc. It's a nonprofit 5013C. They're located at 414 Asbury Avenue, and they will be collecting the funds and forwarding on to Haiti. They are asking that we do not donate clothing, water, et cetera, because they just don't have the resources to do that. What they need right now is cash or building supplies. So if you have building supplies or cash, they will accept either. So I hope that people will listen to this and act accordingly. Thank you. Uh, last Saturday and Sunday, I had the opportunity of going down to the new, the new indoor skate arena. And I tell you, I was just I was just amazed how disciplined the people were, the way it was run. And I congratulate you on starting that. It was all, it wasn't just kids. It was, I would say, like maybe 10 to like 30 or 40 years of age. And everybody just enjoyed one another. They couldn't wait to get in. So I congratulate you for starting something like that. Uh, the Recreation Committee has came up with a few ideas and they will bring it to the city manager, the mayor, and the council. Um, what we're planning on doing is basically uh, doing more in the winter months. We would like to have indoor uh, soccer, maybe towards the end of the winter. We plan on having basketball for the older uh, adults. That would help maybe years ago they had um, midnight basketball, I believe as a climb went down. And there's gonna be a quite uh, two or three other activities. And uh, I think Leachia Floyd will be bringing it to the attention of the public and the council in another week or so. That's it. So the only thing I was going to bring up was I got multiple calls about uh, the downtown this weekend, um, just issues going on down there, fights in front of bars, kicked over planners, and when uh, when we asked to see the police reports or get some sort of report from the police department about the number of calls that took place in the downtown this weekend, there was one call uh, for a noise complaint, none of which was for the places that people were complaining about to me on the phone and online. Mm -hmm. So um, I would just reiterate that if there are some bars um, anywhere in Asbury Park that um, incidences are happening around or near or at, that you call the police because those police reports are something we review when we're renewing liquor licenses. Mm -hmm. And if we have absolutely no report or calls about an incident that is clearly <coughs> videotaped and online, um, it presents a problem when we try to put um, restrictions on liquor licenses. So um, just to reiterate, for those of you in the downtown area, if there's a problem, you can absolutely call me. I have no problem with you calling me, but I would ask that you obviously call the police as well. All right. Any matters by the city manager? We have three items that are under your Thank you, sir. review. Uh, number two, we've already gone over. At the last meeting, the deputy mayor, Swain, asked about snow removal procedures. We've started reviewing our internal procedures and hope to have something uh, a little bit more concrete for the next meeting or early November meeting. The big issue is obviously going to be communication and how the alternate side of the street parking plays. So currently, um, we've had some internal discussions, nothing formal, just talking. And our next step is to review the emergency operations. Plan just to make sure that everything is uniform across you know, 
our planning documents, and hopefully we can get that done by the end of the month, just so you guys can have an idea of how the Baltimore Society of Trees should be implemented. Our, remember earlier this summer, I'll just throw this out there, we ordered a new front end motor that is larger and a new dump truck. The front end motor is here. Uh, it's been here for about a week or two. And the dump truck, there's some issues with the body build and they hope mid-November. Um, but that's to be anticipated. It happened in the last one that I ordered and did the job. So hopefully we have the larger dump, dump truck by December. That's hopeful. So just to the, to the snow removal point, Michael, because this is before your time, but it's, it's every year I've lived in Esbury Park. We have a very reactionary um, response to storms, meaning we never take the precautionary measures first, or rarely. I would say last year was probably one of the first years that we were better about it. Um, so the sooner we have, whether it's alternate side of the street parking or whatever it is that we're going to do, um, and the sooner we can get word out about it. So if a storm comes at the end of October or the first week in November, we, we don't do what we normally do every year, which is panic and try to get the word out to a bunch of people and miss half of the population. And because we would try to use this year, I think APTV, which uploads their schedules once a week, and, and that's one of the one of the areas that is really good at capturing uh, the seniors. The seniors watch APTV on their TV. They don't. They don't. Well, I'm not sure if they watch it online, but I know they watch it on APTV because. Um, they've mentioned it to me. If we could have um, what our procedures are, emergency numbers, APTV could flash a slide. Um, so we started to get the word out weeks before there's a storm. But uh, living here 15 or 16 years, we never get this right. We, we just don't ever get it right. And it, it irritates me every year. And that goes part of what the emergency operations plan should entail. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, and D happen. A, B, C, and D happen. And in most municipalities, that plan We've had internal discussions, Kevin and I have talked about it over the last year, of, you know, at some point we need to really need to sit down and go through every aspect of it, and, you know, Kevin is deputy OEM coordinator. So this is a good first start for the communication side, because that's really the key to everything, that's where it all starts. So next, in a couple of weeks, we're all going to sit down and, and go through the communications of what we have, because quite honestly, statewide, where most of these were written, they still didn't exist, you didn't have cell phones everywhere, people didn't have text messages. It just was a different time. And so, you know, Facebook and Twitter didn't, weren't as prevalent. So we need to make those adjustments in the plan and how we operate. So we'll get there. Yeah, and just to clarify, also, when I say that we never get this right, we never get word out on this right. So we, I'm not saying that we don't, um, listen, sometimes we do a great job plowing, sometimes we don't, but um, sometimes we do a great job um, in whatever goes wrong with the storm power. But what we don't do a great job on is um, uh, getting the word out where to park, what's open, what's closed, where you know where we want people to move their car if possible, and when there's a hurricane, go to Bangs Lot, wh whatever it is. That, that, that's the aspect of the planning that I'm not sure that we do a great job. I agree with that. So then the third thing on the list um, is a transportation alternative program. This is um, coordinated by DOT, it's 100% funded through them. Um, tonight here is Doug McQueen with the Wesley Commission. We have a couple actions that could be taken in the next couple weeks. Um, the commission and met with Doug, met with myself, Councilwoman Chapman and Mayor Moore uh, about a week or two ago at one of the Wesley bridges the commission is interested in fixing the bridges. Um, it is a fantastic idea, it's a fantastic project. There's some cost concerns with it, obviously. Um, I know the engineer from the commission is still working out some of the details. That's an intermunicipal application, so it needs to have city approval, Neptune approval, and the camp association, if I'm saying that right, approval, from my understanding. Doug, I think I'm wrong on this stuff, so. And county. And county approval, I didn't get there yet, um, because it's, and when you say approval, of resolution? Resolution. It's resolution. resolution? Okay. And whatever camp does for their body. Um, it is, uh, as I said, a, a great idea to resurface the bridge back to more of a historic nature. Um, there's two reports, as Doug had mentioned when we were out there, that sh going back to 2004, I believe, 
that say that these repairs need to be done i'm more of the viewpoint of i'd rather spend money today than spend more money later which is going to fall into one of those things at some point in time we as a city in working with the commission would could or possibly service a code lead applicant there's still some of those details to work out the application is due in november the city is also proposing its own application of main street streetscape to coordinate to go along with what dot is doing with them street trees a mosaic bike racks benches excuse me i'm getting sick of our application as a transitional aid municipality we get higher funding for it but right now that's what staff's looking at we've talked with doug i talked to him friday there's some emails michelle's involved also of how both applications can work obviously the city one's a little bit easier because it's just a resolution the wesley lake commission one is a little bit harder because there's a lot of moving parts especially camp association which i've never dealt with since i've been here so we don't know how that's going to interplay and you can submit two applications that you can submit to up you can submit the city application and the wesley lake it would be a supporting and then see who they funded it yes right now as we understand it supporting the wesley lake commission i don't have you gotten if you can apply on your own yet have you gotten no statute that we're looking at would be yes but according to the federal statute the wesley lake commission in and of itself would qualify under local public agency the question would be whether or not you know what doug if you're going to talk can you come to the mic just because people if people at home they work now we turned them on thanks for the record doug mcqueen on behalf of the wesley lake commission so the wesley lake commission does qualify under the federal guidelines as a local public agency to apply on on its own accord okay for a tap grant so but the one question that i still need to hear back from nj dot about and get some guidance on is whether or not um a the wesley lake commission could assign a responsible charge that's a full-time employee of either municipality each grant has to have someone named who's a full-time employee of the local public agency and since the wesley lake commission does not have any full-time employees we would need to find out if one can be designated from one of the two participating municipalities okay so that question isn't answered yet and it would if if it couldn't happen of course it would be fatal to the application and we'd just figure out a way to do it another time one of the things that doug and i talked about on friday was if we can't figure this out now this funding comes along every two or three years really nail down a price um the mayor and i both had concerns when we were out there with doug that the footings might be another issue and an eight hundred thousand dollar application could easily turn into a 1.8 million dollar application where it's now oh my god where where are we going to fund this between two towns where we would have to say since we fund the commission now we have to come up with half a million dollars each and we're talking about one bridge here though michael right yeah but possibly you don't we don't know until we get there right so so the the costing hasn't been done yet the wesley lake um commission engineer from maser said they would work with us on that to come up with both the cost schedule and a project schedule um but i was at a, a dot workshop where they described some of the criteria and they were clear in saying that they like to see fully completed projects and they also like to fully fund projects so one advantage here with two bridges across wesley lake is that it could be scalable if both bridges couldn't be done with the allocated money from the grant let's say it's four hundred thousand dollars then you just pick one of the bridges and finish that as long as it could be finished so the so scalability is somewhat of an advantage but michael's right that the cost could be way beyond what's right granted. so sunset's costing us a million which Correct. is a small but that's price. that's a whole new bridge from scratch this is more okay. resurfacing and, and there, there are a list of items okay um if the council didn't get uh, kind of a briefing sheet on that i could hand you all one and have some printed okay so it would be so just so i'm clear so wesley lake would so the city will submit an application i guess for the street on main street yeah. Yeah. and then wesley lake submits an app and this grant goes up to about a million average grants are in the 400 to 500 thousand range from okay. the 2014 <coughs> awards there is a soft cap of a million dollars for but they dot said they are willing to fund over a million dollars for projects that are really compelling 
probably this project wouldn't fit that criteria. Would it not. Would not. No. Okay. That, that's multiple jurisdictions, huge oh. amount of traffic, like a bridge bridge, not a uh, pedestrian okay. footbridge. Yeah. And if you keep your application at the four to six hundred thousand dollar level, you have a much better chance of being funded, especially if you can throw some local money in there. So if us and Neptune both said, "Here's fifty grand," now the six hundred thousand dollar application is really a seven hundred thousand dollar project. That's going to help with the scoring as they go through with it. Um, we'll also have the advantages of doing the Sunset Lake footbridge because we have experience doing bridges. Um, it is historic, so you know you obviously need to work with with Shippo on things, which Michelle's been involved with. With you know she's an award-winning planner from a couple meetings ago, stuff like this. So it's a fascinating project that would benefit the region as a whole. But at the end of the day, it's camp association timing, getting everyone on board with it. And you have the dates of when all these people meet because you're going to have to grab them like a week before they Correct. I sent right? Michael a schedule okay. of dates of when these resolutions would need to pass. Mm -hmm. So we understand that. We would just need to reach out and make the contact to, to make sure they're all done by the November 10th deadline. We can literally be the last one. Yeah. Um, we okay. tentatively right now have a meeting scheduled on the 9th. The application is due the 10th. If everything works out um, through all the other avenues, on the 9th, we can do a resolution saying, application it could be signed given to Doug scanned and uploaded into this into this New Jersey state system that night so and we are literally we could be the last one to let everything sort of go through and is it more advantageous to ask for both bridges or just focus on one knowing that it's going to be 400,000 tops I think we need to wait to believe oh, okay. 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 the other the thing last. too we're talking about the streetscape wrapping the streetscape from Main Street um, we, down we looked at that, but it's just going to be too expensive um, because the streetscape side, you know, you're hundred to two hundred thousand dollars, another six hundred thousand dollars here, eight hundred thousand dollar project. It's a nice project. I mean, it would really tie things in together nicely. I don't think it would get funded. I, I think that all this is one would be a better separate. It's a better application at the end of the day because there's so many parties in involved. <coughs> tying in Main Street down into the bridges as one big project, <clears throat> the way we have to set up an agreement is Neptune and the Camp Association would also have to agree with everything. So then they would have design control in that respect. And the Camp Meeting Association, because they own the land? They own the underlying land on their side of the bridge, where, where the aprons of the bridge touch the ocean grove. So okay. it's... Um, exempt property that's designated as a right-of-way. So technically, they own the underlying right-of-way. So they, they do need to approve that. Okay. It's a fan, I, I, you know, when we met, it, it was a fantastic project. And at some point in time, there has to be some consideration going through avenues to get this done because in five to 10 years, we might have, assuming it's not just that it's just going to continue to do great, um, especially since this isn't clean water that goes in there. This is actually stormwater runoff. <coughs> this isn't exactly you know pure rain water coming from a mountain spring and this big bottle that you can be drinking from. So it's we're going to have to give it consideration in the next couple of years. If, if I could add to whatever scale of the project was done, uh, because it's a carry down of, of federal funds through the state, it's required that any of the ramps be ADA compliant. And right now we know that the, the ramps that currently exist on the Asbury Park side of the Wesley Grove footbridges are not ADA compliant. Um, so that would need to be, once you start one of them, you'd have to finish at least that one up to ADA compliance. That's why the scalability is kind of an advantage in that regard. And that if we went with a Western footbridge, it's half the size of the Eastern footbridge. Mm -hmm. And it's also in better condition from from what we saw. And, uh, and on the ADA side of things, by the end of this month, early November, we'll actually have an ADA plan in place. Um, we don't have one that I've been able to find. I'm sure it was done in the, the early 80s. Um, but the ADA ramps, which Doug mentioned, are going to be expensive because there's a lot of grading there. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very expensive. I mean, it's probably a forty to $70,000 guess on how you can pitch that because it's, it's steep. But again, you know, we'll let the engineers do that. That's just eyeballing. When it's done, it will be fantastic. We just you know, get it approved, get it designed, get it out to bid, then it's over. So. Okay. If you like, I'll leave you a briefing sheet about it if you haven't seen it already. Thanks. Thank you.
Matters by the city attorney. I have no matters at this time. All right. Can I have a motion to open the meeting up to the public? Second. All in favor? All opposed? The public is expe expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will immediately rule such conduct out of order and after appropriate warning may terminate any further comments from the speaker. Each speaker, please state your name and address for the record, please. Oh. You break it, you buy it, Ed. You break it, you buy it. Um, do I have to sign for John? I'll sign for John. Jan Sparrow Words Bookstore in 2nd Avenue. Just a couple of things. First of all, I know the zombie walk always creates a little bit of a challenge in the evening, but I would like to say thank you to the City Council for approving street closure at 4 o'clock. It really, we all mentioned downtown that it was very helpful to have people shopping between noon and 4 as opposed to having that street closed off. So it made a tremendous difference. Secondly, the uh, recognition that we're going to do hopefully Saturdays again as closures um, between Thanksgiving and Christmas again makes a tremendous difference in our ability to do business during the holidays. So we really appreciate the City Council really paying attention to and recognizing the importance of helping us figure out how to do what we do even better. And the last thing I want to mention because I'm traveling tomorrow night is I would like to support um, I think it's Michelle's redesigning of this uh, central business district and Tara Weldon's hot mess wanting to move into the passion group. As a part of the leadership for the downtown merchants guild, one of our concerns is continuously being restaurants and bars and having enough business downtown during the day that it brings people to our community to shop. And as she's indicated, she brings in five to 600 individuals during the day who can work in her st uh, plan in her store and then fan out and shop and go to restaurants. And it would really be, I think, important for us to have someone like her on that corner rather than the opportunity for, I mean, it's a great space for a restaurant, I'm sure, and of course we all hear rumors, but that's beside the point. But in the meantime, we would really like to have retail during the day because it really does help us to have more and more people in our community, particularly from January, February, March, December, where we move into those months where people aren't always sure we're open 24-7 uh, or around the, or year round. So I'm going to, uh, as a, the leadership team from the Asbury Park Shuffle and the Downtown Merchants Association ask that you reconsider and say yes to her wanting to move her particular shop, her event planning business, and all those amazing people that come to town to uh, say yes to that particular proposal because I think it's going to make a tremendous difference in our downtown area. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John Grant, 1205 Fourth Avenue. I just have a question. What are the specifics of the Main Street TAP application you're going to apply for? We haven't gotten there yet. Um, we're looking at a mosaic at Asbury Avenue, which is a traffic calming measure. Um, trees, bike racks, and benches for now. So we're still developing everything. And is it on a certain section? Full length. Oh, OK, good. Thank you. We'll be closed. Second. Second. Do you have a motion to adjourn? Second. 